Readers, today I want to teach you that readers not only consider what shapes the main character's perspectives, they also do this for minor characters. One tip I'll give you is that since you rarely get to hear the inner thinking of minor characters, to understand them, you especially look for details that are embedded in dialogue or actions. Think alongside me for a moment. Let's go back to the last part of the chapter we started yesterday, how to transform an everyday, ordinary hoop court into a place of higher learning for you at the podium. Let's look at this part again, asking what do we learn about each minor character's perspective? How does this character see the world? Does he see the world in the same way as a main character? Remember, you usually won't get to hear the inner thinking of your minor characters. Instead, you have to listen to what they say and watch what they do. Let's go back to the part of the story where our narrator has been sleeping in the car and a cop insists on taking him to where his father works. Then the cop pulls his father out to talk to him. After the cop explains the situation, your pop will put on an uncomfortable smile and vouch for you. He'll say you're a good kid and that you're just down here to play some ball at a gym in Balboa Park. He'll shake hands with the cop enthusiastically, thanking him for his service and apologizing for any trouble you may have caused. Soon, as the cop leaves, though, your pop will transform back into himself. Don't worry about that power-happy pendijo, he'll say, rubbing your shoulder. You didn't do nothing wrong. I was just sleeping. Mexicans are allowed to sleep, too, he'll look you straight in the eyes, nodding. And in this moment, you'll feel closer to your old man than ever before. Watch me do this work. It's a little tricky because I can't hear what the father is thinking or feeling but I can watch his actions and listen to what he says. Like he shakes hands with the cop enthusiastically. He thanks him for his service. He apologizes. Hmm, what do these actions show me about him and about how he sees the world? Well, it seems like he's really nervous about this cop. This father has never been polite so far in the story, but suddenly here, he gets extra polite. That tells me that he has learned it's important to be polite to the police. What else? Well, again, I can't hear what he's thinking or feel what he's feeling, but after the cop leaves, I do hear the father call the cop a bad name, and then he tells his son, you didn't do nothing wrong. I feel like that dialogue tells me that this man is kind of bitter about the cops. It feels like maybe he has had bad experiences with them. Did you see how I did that? How I listened to what he said, watched how he behaved, and made some tentative theories. And sometimes there will be a line that stands out to you a line that feels extra important. We felt like that about the line where the boy says that basketball is a way out for him. I think this line might be another big one, and it comes from the dad, not the boy. Mexicans are allowed to sleep too, he says. I think it is in the tone of what he says that stands out to me. He sounds angry and bitter, doesn't he? Readers, do you see how I didn't wait for the minor character to share his or her perspective? That almost never happens. Instead, I had to read between the lines, paying close attention to what the minor character said and did, thinking about the words and the tone, watching how the character behaves, and it turned out that there was a lot to be learned about how this character sees the world. Readers, surely there are moments in your stories when you learn more about the minor characters' perspectives, how they see the world. Will you take a moment to look back at your story 
and find a place where you can do the same thinking work. Think about a minor character. How does your author give you insight into a minor character's perspective? Do you get to hear their inner thinking? Or do you have to kind of watch them carefully from the outside? The way we have to watch with each of Matt De La Pina's minor characters. Go ahead and figure some of this out. As you go off and read today, keep this thinking work in mind. As you consider characters' perspectives, what shapes your characters and how they see the world, think about the main character and also think about the minor characters. Oh, and one more thing. Make sure that you have a second story in hand if you haven't started one yet. If the first one you chose was really long, you may want to choose a shorter one. So you get to know more authors. Your goal is to try to read at least three short stories across this week.